What is up people and welcome to part three of the music finding automation algorithm system project thing. Um, I'm super excited about this project. In part one and two, we built out a system that can help us download songs and build up an inventory. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at how do we visualize all the songs and really get some value out of the system so we can start using the music. So I'm going to build some interfaces. So let's get cracking. All right, folks, so quick recap. In part one and two, we built the music request API, which takes a song request and pops it into a message queue. We have a consumer that we wrote that looks at the message queue. It reaches out to the music provider, so YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, etc., and many more, and it downloads the song and puts it into our storage. So now I'm gonna show you guys what the, the updates are that I made to this architecture. As a system user, um, I don't want to be talking to the API directly like we had in part one and two. I want a pretty, um, like a pretty UI that I can use and just type in or paste in the URL and click a button um, that will fire off the request to the, to the API. So basically this part in blue is what we're going to build, a pretty UI. And now to have a UI, the second thing we're going to need is we're going to need like song title, URL, um artist name all the kind of metadata that we have from the storage we need to surface that up through an api so we're going to need to build this music request api so i would say part three <clears throat> we're going to be focusing on this block over here okay, now before we start with the user interface we need to get our data and the cool thing about couch db is it has this concept of views so i went and created two views i have a view to get the song list. Our UI is gonna need a way to display all the songs in a list. Obviously, that's the most obvious one. So we have a view to get the song list. And then the other one that's quite obvious that we're gonna need is a song by URL. The other cool thing that CouchDB has is it has an API built in. So every view um, is basically callable via an API. So if I look at this one, this is the song list view. And we can just do a get on this request and it'll give us the JSON um, for all the songs. So I think the most logical one to start off with will be this music storage API. So let's get cracking. So I have a Docker file. I just copy pasted the Docker file from the music consumer as it's also a straightforward Golang one. Um, we just get a bunch of dependencies. I think we're just going to need a web server because it's an API. And then we go ahead and build it and we switch it out using Docker multi-stage. Basic thing here, we're just going to need a like a, another couple of structs. We're going to need one to hold our config and one to say, okay, where is our database? And I'm going to go ahead and build a config parser sim similar to how we have in the music consumer. So I'm actually just going to copy paste from that one. Okay, this, this should work. Um, copied it from our music consumer. So we get the, the configuration file here off disk and we pass it into um, our struct and then we just return it. So this is a basic um, web server. I'm just using this one from off GitHub. And what we're doing here is we're gonna make one uh, route here called song all. So this one's gonna call our view to get the list of songs. And I'm thinking to abstract the storage layer out to a separate um, separate like class. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call that like songs.go. And then there'll be like a songs all and maybe a songs by URL. So if I decide to change my storage, I just change the storage.go to something else and all the logic to talk to CouchDB will all be in there. Okay, so similarly, I have a songs by URL. So I just need these two to surface both my views. This one calls the uh, storage layer, storage song list all. And this one calls storage layer, storage song item by URL. So we take the query string here. Um, we take the URL proportion of the query string, pass it in and we get a byte array back and we just send it back as a string so which will be json formatted 
And then last but not least, I have these two functions that I created as part of the storage layer. And they just make like HTTP calls to that um, CouchDB API. So very simple. Right, so after building that, we I do Docker Compose up and we should have our thing under songs all. So that's the API call. You can see we're returning our, our metadata through there. And the other one is by URL. So you do by URL and then pass in a URL. I can pass in like a one of the song URLs that we have. There we go. So if I do that call, song by URL, I pass in one of the URLs that I have and we get the song back. So I'm going to start my um, image from an Alpine version of Nginx. It's only like a, like a 10 or so megabyte um, Docker file, Docker image. And on top of that, we'll just um, slap our HTML together. So let's do this. So very basic Nginx configuration. Um, we're just going to listen on port 80. We have a status page for just a health probe and we're searching everything on location slash inside this root html folder so it's just a static web server and we also serve up any like png javascript files and css and what i've gone and done here is um, just built a basic html page we're going to load in a bootstrap style sheet so, so we can give it a nice kind of a theme or something and we'll build out our content into the body over here so i'm going to get this built up and we can go ahead what I've been just playing around with is actually looking at Angular JS. So I'm going through the W3 Schools tutorials and um, just copied this. I'm doing references to all the bootstrap bits and you can see my plain and simple UI at this stage. It's still hello world. So I'm gonna go ahead and build this out. So I'll see you in a bit. Right, so what are we doing here? We're loading up um, jQuery, Bootstrap and Angular and what I've done or my thinking, my thought process is I'll have this like song list um, and that's part of the model and then we have the song controller and this is our app module and it's going to by default make a call and say get me all the songs and it's going to take the response and push it into the song list and our scope will be the song list. So that'll allow Angular to bind our song list to our um, view. Okay, so this is the first thing I thought about, like what if I already have a song? I don't want it to go through the whole cycle. So we have that one view that says get item by URL. So what I do, if, I, if someone pastes in a song, we already have, I don't need this list part and we say send to queue, it automatically goes to 100%. That's because it calls the song API to check, do we have the song already? And it says, okay, I got it. It'll just, um, it'll just do that. And let's say here's a song that I don't have yet. So we send it to queue. See what it's gonna happen is, the timeout is quite low, but you see a progress bar going. And it should make it before the timeout. And there we go, it's green. That means it's done, it's in the storage. If the time runs out and it gets to max, it goes red. That means I have to go and see. There's either a failure or it just took too long. I hope you guys like this video. Um, I think the purpose of this video is to take the, the project a little bit quicker and find some value um, out of the project. And that's something I can encourage you guys when you have side projects, try to take a path that's gonna provide you immediate value so the first thing that i needed to do was um, download music i needed the the music that i can get even if i manually have to go and find it i need a way to get the binary and i need the way to a place to store the binary so that's the first thing the second thing was um i needed all the the, the metadata right now i store the stuff in a text file so i needed a way to you know, go to a place where I can drag and drop the songs into a like a holding place and then it makes me YouTube description automatically so I don't have to manage a text file. So that's something the YouTube description builder um, is something that I'm going to work on and extend so that I get immediate value out of it. 
Um, the third thing is right now to to find songs, I, I can I can come straight to the system and say, okay, let me look at what I, what I have, and then dr drag and drop songs into the YouTube description builder, and I can take the binary out of here straight into my video editor. So anyway, part four is probably where I will build like some kind of a background process, and the background process will look at the music that I already have, use the pr cloud provider API. So if it's a SoundCloud API. YouTube API, Spotify API, I can build a background process for each one of those. And based on the music that I already have in the system, it can reach out and find related songs and populate those into the queue. And then so the music warehouse can automatically start growing um, at a configurable rate. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like and subscribe and yeah, comment down below. And I will put the source code on GitHub as well. So if you want to run this, uh, feel free. And if you want to contribute, yeah, feel free and give it a star. So peace.